This is my question. The length of Lori's rectangular pool is tripled width. The pool covers an area of 192 meters square. A. If Lori swims across the diagonal and back, how far does she travel? And B. At the same time Lori starts swimming, her cat walks one lap around the pool. Lori can swim three quarters as fast as her cat can walk. We will return to the starting point first to justify your answer. Before we attempt A or B, we have to first figure out the side lengths of the rectangle, so the length and width. And to do this, we are going to have to use algebra. And we know the area is 192 meters square. And to get the area of a rectangle, we have to do length times width. So our algebraic form would be 192 meters square is equal to length times width. So let me just write that down quickly. 192 meters squared equal to length times width. Okay, so we know that the length is triple the width. So that means L is equal to 3W. So we're going to replace the L here with 3W. We do this so that we now can put multiply these variables together since they are the same variable. So that's going to be our next step. 3w times w, which equals 3w squared. The reason why it is square is because when you multiply the same variable by itself, it equals square. The 3 is untouched here because it is not being multiplied by another term. So next is we want to isolate the w squared from the 3. So this would be the operation of multiplication. The opposite is division. So that's what we're going to do. 3w squared over 3. And we have to do on one side, we have to do the other side. So 119 meters squared divided by 3. This gives us w squared and 64 meters squared. Our next step is to isolate the variable even more. Just get the w by itself, which means we have to get rid of the square. The opposite operation of a square is a square root. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to square root w squared. And what we do on one side, we got to do on the other side. So we have to square root the 64 meters squared. This gives us 8 meters is equal to w. And that is our final answer for the width. The 8 meters is equal to the width. And so now we go back to this sheet. We know what here, this side length is 8 meters. And we know that the, the length is triple its width. So here we're going to add, so 8 times 3 would be 24. So we know the side lengths now of the pool. So now we can commence question A. Now question A. If Lori swims, if Lori swims across the uh, diagonal and back, how far does she travel? So here is the diagonal line that they're talking about, and we have to, uh, we have to discover it. And so what I used was the Pythagorean theorem. This helps us discover the length of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. And as you can see here, this triangle has a right angle. So the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared represents the base, b squared represents the height, and this would be basically the width and the length. So the height is the width and the length is the base. The base. So it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and c squared is equal to the hypotenuse, which we're trying to find out the length of this diagonal line. So our formula would be a square plus b square is equal to c square. So a square, the base is 24 meters. So we'd write 24, 24 meters square plus b square, which is the height. So 8 meters plus 8 meters square is equal to c square. Now we want to get rid of the exponents. So what we're going to do is we're going to square the numbers because they're not variable, so we can actually do this. So it would be 24 squared would be 576 plus 64 is equal to c squared. So we'd add these two together. So 576 plus 64 is 640 is equal to c squared. Now we want to get rid of the exponent and just isolate the variable. So what we're going to do, like we did on the first part, is do the opposite operation of square, which is square root. So we're going to square root both sides. And this gives us a final answer of c 
is equal to 25.29. And so this means that this side length right here is 25.29 meters. But we're not finished yet for the question. It says there and back. So it'd be mean traveling from here to there and there to there. So essentially what we have to do is we've got to take this times by two, which is equal to a total of 50.58 meters. So our therefore statement would be the, sorry, the lorry travels 50.58 meters swimming there and back. So we have discovered the answer for question A. Okay, now time for question B. At the same time Lori starts swimming, her cat walks one lap around the pool. Lori can swim three quarters as fast as her cat can walk. Who will return to the starting place first? Justify your answer. We already know the, um, the distance that Lori would travel, which is from here to here. That is 50.58 meters there and back. So now we have to figure out the perimeter of the pool, which is basically the distance the cat would travel. So we know the per to calculate the perimeter, you add all the side lengths. So length plus length plus width plus width. Essentially, it'd be two lengths plus two widths. So we'd put in the formula here. Perimeter is equal to 2L, which represents length, plus 2 width, which represents, sorry, 2W, which represents width. So now we'll input the actual distance of the length and the width for what they represent. So L represents length. The length is 24. So two side lengths of 24 plus two side lengths of the width, which is 8 meters. So two plus two times 24 plus two times uh, eight. Quickly do that math, which is 48 plus 16. Add that up and it's 64 meters. So the cat traveled a total of 64 meters. So now we have the last question, uh, the last part of the question. So we know that the distance the cat travels around the perimeter and we know that Lori travels a total of 50.58 meters. So now we, we're gonna figure out the pace and using the pace, we're gonna calculate the times they take to uh, travel their distance. So we know that Lori can swim only three quarters as fast as a cat can walk. So a ratio would be one to 0 0.75. And so this is our pace we're using. One meter per second is the cat's pace and 0 0.75 meters is Lori's pace. This is, might not actually be their actual pace, but by the fact that um, Lori can swim three quarters as fast as her cat can walk, we are using the same ratio to determine the uh, amount of time it takes for both of them. And so using this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide each of their total, uh, their pace by their total distance, or sorry, no, we're gonna divide the total distance by their pace. So to put this into a formula, it'd be T, so time, I guess we could use T to represent it, divided by, uh, we'll do, what's her name, uh, Lori's first. So 0 0.75 meters, we know it's 50.58, it's her distance. So we're gonna put 50, 50, I get a new pencil. 50.58 meters over 0 0.75. And then subtracted by the distance of the cat, which is 64 meters, over the one meter per second pace. Uh, so we can get rid of the, um, the unit here, because we don't need the units. And the reason why we are subtracting them is because using this, we can actually discover not only who's quicker, but the gap. Um, and so by doing this, if we get a negative, it means that Lori was faster by the amount of time that we end up with after subtracting. But if we get a positive, it means that the cat was faster by the certain amount of time that we get the, uh, we end with once we answer the question. And so now it's pretty easy the rest of the way. We're going to do the division for each before subtracting. So 
The total time for Lori is a total of 67.44. So that's her time. It takes her 67.44 seconds to travel from here to here using the ratio of pace we came up with. Subtracted by the cat's time, which is 64 divided by one, which is 64. So the cat takes 64 seconds to travel from here around using the ratio time, uh, ratio pace we came up with. So now it's pretty simple. Subtract, subtract them. So that means t is equal to 3.44. And so because it's a positive, we obviously already can tell that the cat was quicker. And just in general, off the uh, total time, it took 67.44 to 64. So now we can write a therefore statement. Therefore, cat would return to the starting point first. By, well, sorry, with the gap, of 3.44 seconds. So that's it. To recap what we did, we first found the length and the width of the rectangle before answering the questions. Then we used the Pythagorean theorem formula to calculate the length of the hypotenuse, which is the diagonal line going there and back. And using that, we could determine the distance or traveled there and back, which is 50.58 meters. Then we determined the distance of the cat and what he had to walk, which was the perimeter, which was 64 meters. And then there we used the pace from the ratio of four to three to discover the time. And this is not technically the correct time, but based off of how fast they were, which was their pace, we could determine that this would be um, who is quicker. It might not be by 3.44 seconds, but because of the pace, we could have used uh, this ratio to solve it. And so the using this pace off of the ratio, the total time for Lori was 67.44 seconds traveling the diagonal distance. And then for the cat, um, going on the perimeter was 64 seconds. And so therefore the cat was quicker with a gap of 3.44 seconds between the cat and Lori. And this, these are the answers to the questions I were given.